Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today, I'm going to share a quick tip that I've used recently quite a bit in the creation of the designcourse.com premium subscription service promo video. So let me just show you what the video looks like real quick. It's not what we're gonna be covering exactly like the whole project that I created uh, in this video, but I'm gonna show you just the process and the technique that I used between Blender and After Effects. So here's the video for the promo. <laughs> Alright, so you can see that there are several instances where I overlaid text uh, and I also manipulated it in After Effects. So I'm going to show you how I did that within Blender and After Effects in this real quick uh, video tutorial. Alright, so check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet. Check out the forums, introduce yourself, and also subscribe here on YouTube. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so basically... What I want to do is just uh, I'm going to use this for the purpose of uh, creating some text and then taking that into After Effects. Though you could do anything uh, in terms of any type of 3D mesh. You could use this cube or you know, anything that you want. Uh, so my object, like I mentioned, I'm going to focus on text. So I'm going to delete this cube and hit Shift A. We're going to add text. So if we zoom in here, hit R for rotate X and 90 we'll get that sitting upright and I'll go ahead and hit tab to edit this text and just edit uh, in whatever man I and mean, that's the first thing that literally comes to mind all right so tab back out I'm in object mode I, I'm gonna go ahead real quickly and just give some um, 3d width I guess you could say and extrude this out so I'm gonna pull this out come here and click on the type tab and come down here to extrude just turn this up right by left clicking and dragging right you know that'll work pretty well right there and if you wanted to you can give it like depth and you can offset it and you know do all sorts of interesting things I'll leave mine like that all right and just so that we have just a tad bit of animation to work with um, down here is the keyframe or the the animation timeline basically these are uh, basically frames uh, down here 0 20 40 60 but if you want to change that to something more familiar like seconds you can go ahead and left click on view and then change to show seconds so we got one two three four etc so I uh, the way you set a keyframe and what a keyframe basically is is well, let's say for example our starting point will be right here all right so right on very uh, frame one what we'll do is hit i as in igloo on your keyboard i'm not really sure how else you would screw that up so i uh, <laughs> i and i uh, oh yeah first very important before we do this what we're going to try to do is keyframe the camera so if we hit zero on the number pad we get the camera view we hit n as a nose uh, on the keyboard, we'll get this up over here, lock camera to view, hit N as it knows again to get that out of there. Um, so right now, if we pull this down and we click on camera, we'll see it highlights it in orange. So now we move around. Let's say, for example, we want our animation to begin, let's say, right here. What we do is hit I, the letter I, and then down here we specify visual uh, location rotation scale that's what I like to use it kind of covers everything all right so now it just places this keyframe right there so if we want it to move say from this point say maybe past the text we can move I uh, let's say maybe two seconds and I'll zoom past it Oh, and also, if this issue happens with you like you get to a certain point and you can't just go past the damn thing you can hit shift control at least on pc it's command on mac shift control and your middle mouse button and 
what you can do is zoom past it like that. So it makes it very easy to just go past the letters or wherever else you want to go. So let's say we're past it and that's where we want it to be. We'll hit I and then hit visual location rotation again. And now if we go back to the beginning and we hit play right here, there we go. All right, so down here we have the start and end. So the start is the start frame. That's like where, wherever you want it to begin. Obviously, logically, it would be the, uh, the beginning here. And then the end, by default, set at 250. If you go back here uh, and change this to deselect seconds, we'll see that we're right here is frame 49. So if we change that to 49, we'll have the end of the animation. And that is what we'll render. Otherwise, if you let it on 250, you would try to render all 250 frames. All right. so. Right now, if this were to render, this is what it would look like. We'd uh, go to render here, and it looks pretty ugly. Uh, and we'll see, it kind of just goes past it. Real quick, I'll change uh, the render settings. I'm gonna change mine. First, let's go to, to Cycles Render. Change device to GPU. If you don't have that option, all you have to do is just go to File, and go to uh, User Preferences, System up here. And if you have a graphics card, you can choose CUDA. I have two of them, so you'll have that option. It's a lot faster when it comes to rendering. All right, so basically now what we want to happen is to make this so that it is transparent. And so down here under film, you click on transparent. So now when we go to render this, make sure RGBA is selected here. When we go to render this, uh, by the way, the resolution, I'm gonna change 1280 by 720. And right now this 50% value basically means the percentage of this, so it would only be half of this value. Take that up to 100. All right. Uh, so now when we go to render this animation, it will make these, each frame is going to be its own PNG file and it's going to be transparent, or the background at least. So we would only see this. And so this is really handy, of course, once we go into uh, After Effects. So... What I want to do, I'm going to make something that looks like a little bit better, so I'm going to get a different material on this. So I'm going to right-click it, just so we have uh, text selected, and I'm going to come over here to Materials, hit New, and maybe I'll try Glossy. And I'm going to change our world color to be brighter in the Real tab. Maybe I'll try Chrome, uh, so Anseotropic or whatever it's called. And you can play around with uh, the settings however you wish. You can add in lights and all that good stuff. I'm going to leave uh, this here just for now, just for a quick example. And now we are ready to render this. So go back here to this setting. I'm going to change samples. I'm just going to change it to like 50 for the render. It's still kind of low, but this will make it go faster. And then down here for performance, if you're using a GPU processing, you can change 64 by 64 to 256 by 256. And we'll uh, come up here. Also, it's going to put this in a temp directory uh, by default. So you want to click on this and set a directory, you know, where you want these individual PNGs to go. There's going to be, you know, uh, 49 individual of these, uh, these files. So... I've gone ahead and paused, and I've saved it in uh, just some random folder called blah test, and we're ready to go. So I'm going to come up here and click on not render. See, they should change this button. It should just be still image because we know we're in the render, the render settings already. This should be changed to like picture or still, and then animation. It's just a little bit redundant there, but whatever. We click animation if obviously we want the animation. So now it's going to go through this, and it's going to take a little bit of time. It's going pretty decently fast, though, but I'll just pause so you don't have to sit here through this. All right, so now that is finished, I hit escape. This last one is basically, uh, there's nothing in it because uh, we went past the text. So hit escape, uh, and now that we're done with that, what we want to do is go into Adobe After Effects. So I have that loaded here. Uh, go to File, New, if you can't see it, you can't see it on my because it's off screen, but File, New, and you'll get this Composition Settings uh, box right here. And I'm gonna, pay, ah, Jesus Christ, I can't talk. Specify the width of 1280 by 720. And sorry, I'm going fast because my kid's like, 
crying downstairs and i'm trying to like <laughs> block her voice out if i talk enough uh let me see duration i i just have it like one minute doesn't matter whatever background color black that's fine uh frame rate whatever yeah we're good to go so hit okay and i'm gonna resize this so it fits inside of the viewport for your uh for the uh video and then i uh, project all you have to do is go to file or just go over here right click import and then file and this is something I was working on through a design course promo already. And this is the actual directory that has all the individual PNG files. As you can see, you know, the, the background's white because it's transparent. Uh, so now if we just hit, uh, select the first one, make sure PNG sequence is checked on by default and hit import. Now we bring this in, or drag it in rather, and you can use your mouse scroll wheel um, to zoom out if you can't fit every or see everything and get that uh, situated in there as best you can and there you go so if we want to preview that just hit zero on the number pad and that's it so the speed at which this moves through you control over in uh, blender by just taking these keyframes and moving them closer to each other. The closer they are, the faster they're gonna go. So you're wondering, okay, well, how do you do that? Just a quick tip, if you never really messed around with the animation, left click and drag this window over here by pulling this section. Uh, we'll change this viewport here to what's called the dope sheet, all right? So now we can see these two sets of keyframes that we have here. So this one right here corresponds to this portion, and then this one over here is that. So the way you move these around, hit A on your keyboard to toggle between selecting all uh, and deselecting, and then so hit uh, B as in boy, and just drag one all around all of those, hit G, and then now you can move those and move them around. So they're a little bit closer. Now the animation will play a much faster. Uh, so yeah, just a quick tip there. And also, you know, if you want to change the background, you can do all that cool, cool sort of stuff. Right click, uh, oh no, composition, layer rather. Man, what am I doing? Click on comp layer, new and solid. And you can make it white if you want. Drag it beneath there so we can see it. And of course, you know, if you've never used After Effects, there's so many different possibilities about what you can do with it. Uh, you could apply different effects to these. So let's say, for example, you want to apply some sort of cool effect on the text. Uh, so you have effects and presets over here. Uh, just you could change the color through color correction. Um, let me see here. You have brightness and contrast. You have uh, animation presets. So if you want to apply like a TV warped effect, you type a TV right there and you have different options. So just drag that on there and then we'll let it preload a little bit. Although that looks like insane right there. <laughs> the effect is a little bit much, but uh, just real cool stuff. So yeah, the general idea of course is to take you know your 3D that you're able to do in Blender Give it an alpha background, and that way you can really take whatever models that you want. And if you have experience After Effects, you can do a lot of cool stuff. I uh, recently used that same sort of effect on the um, designcourse.com premium promo video. And I think I already showed that. I'm going to show it in the video anyhow, so I won't show that again. But I... Uh, yeah, so that is it. Just a quick tip. Um, and yeah, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet, and subscribe here on YouTube. <laughs>